If you will, take your Bible tonight, turn to the book of Mark, chapter 13. I think I said that right. Yeah, 13, verses 5 through 10. And you'll bear with me. It's uh, been a long time since I've preached a night service. Been a while. And you know them night services, they're a little bit longer than the morning services. And so, you know, when, a, when a, 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 a devout, evangelistic type person like myself gets up and normally preaches for 45 minutes at a time, it's hard to cut myself back on a Sunday night. So we may be out here in five, ten minutes, I don't know. But I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop when the Lord wants me to stop. And if I lose my voice tonight, I've been having trouble with my voice, so y'all just keep on going without me. But... Uh, Oh, I am glad to see you here tonight, and this has been something, I just want to express something that's been on my heart and my mind. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard during the summertime to get back to church on Sunday night, I understand that. And I know that it's a struggle sometimes to get here on Wednesday night, but you know, I'm so thankful for dedicated Christians who come all services. I'm, I'm, and I'm not down any if you can't make it. I understand that work, work interferes and different things interfere, but folks, I want you to know you get some of your greatest blessings on a Sunday night. You get your meat and taters on Sunday night. It's when you can sit down and, and study God's Word on Sunday and Wednesday night and really get in depth to it. And I'm just so thankful to have you here tonight. And I, I, I just uh, am so, uh, and I, I pray that others will join us uh, in time. I know that summertime puts a kink in everybody's plan. Any given week, we got uh, families gone, and, and we definitely don't hold their vacation time or their family time against them. But uh, we're just so glad to have you here tonight. I want to. Tell you, who knows the, about the McCamies? Y'all know who the McCamies are? Raise your hand if you know who the McCamies are. No one past my age knows what the McCamies are. The McCamies are probably one of the best groups of singing people I think I've ever heard in my life, you know, and that's a personal opinion. A, a little lady by the name of Peg McCamies, she gets to singing sometimes and she throws her shoes off, and people say she ought not do that. <laughs> but, but, folks, if you ever have a chance to listen to them, a lot of the music that I've sang over the years was McCamey's song. Well, they come out with a new one, and I, I just like the words to it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read off the words to you. It's called The Blessed Old Book, and, and uh, Miss McCamey's husband sings this song. It says, It's a well of pure water when I'm thirsty and dry, bread when I'm hungry and warm. The battle is raging. It's my faithful sword, my shelter from life's troubled storm. It's a light into my pathway and a lamp into my feet. And when the world gets uh, so dark you can't see, and I've not made one change in the word that it says, but it sure made a change in me. The second verse says, When I think of what it costs just to hold it in my hand, it reminds me that I owe a great debt to all of the martyrs who go to the stake and quote it with their dying breath. Now its critics are many and its believers are few, but one thing I found to be true, that if you find when you read that there's something wrong, there's something wrong with you. How true is that? The chorus of it says, This blessed old book that I hold in my hand is true from beginning to end. It's the solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. We're going to be talking about our Bibles, the Word of God. Look at Mark chapter 13, verses 5 through 10. It says, And Jesus, answering them, began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when you shall hear the words of, the, hear the, of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end is, shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famine and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. But take heed yourselves, for they shall deliver up to you the, to councils and to the, in the synagogues, and shall be beaten. And you shall be brought before the rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And our key verse tonight, verse 10, And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Let's pray tonight. Father, we come to you in prayer. Lord, I don't have much, but I ask that you'll just multiply it and use it, Lord. Use it for our hearts, and Lord, just let it lay on our, our heart, Lord. Help us become better Christians, better servants for you. Lord, I just ask that your word just open up, Lord, and we meditate on it, Lord. Let it be that lamp unto our feet and our light unto our path. Lord, I just ask you to be with all the ones that's here, blessed in a mighty way. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. For these things I ask in your name. Amen. Amen. I did the liberty tonight. I don't usually do a show and tell, but will y'all let me do a show and tell tonight? I've always wanted to do show and tell. They quit that when I was out of kindergarten, and I just want to keep bringing stuff, but they told me to leave it at home. 
So I, I wanted to bring something tonight. What you see on the table here this uh, tonight is most of the Bibles that me and Leslie own in our home. And you know, we, we know where these Bibles came from. We know their history and their background and their story. We see tonight, I've got these little Bibles right here. And if I remember, if you're baptized in this church, I try to give you one of these little testaments. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes people got to remember. But I usually keep some of these in my office uh, upstairs. And, and it's just a little New Testament Bible. I keep one myself. This little pink one, it sure ain't mine. <laughs> it's Leslie's. It's Leslie's study Bible called The Message. I've got my study Bible here. It's the Max Decato Life Lesson Study Bible. I use it. It's a new King James Version. I use it to study by. Most of the time when I preach, I preach by King James. Y'all know that because I get your tongue tied on the these and the thous, but I, I ain't willing to change. But this is my study Bible. This Bible here is a little brown Bible. This Bible is the Bible that Brother Scotty used in our wedding ceremony. This is the Bible that he wrote a letter to us in and performed our marriage out of. This book right here will stay with us for many, many years and hold sentimental value. This Bible right here was my first big boy Bible. This is when I got out of the Walmart Bibles and I went to Lifeway and I bought me a Bible and it's tattered and it's worn and the pages are dog-eared and they got paper clips and I've got, of all things, quarter wrappers marking the pages. But this is one of the first Bibles I began to preach out of. One of the first Bibles that I, had, I thought I was high cotton because I had thumb tabs and I still couldn't find my books. But this, is, uh, this Bible right here, no matter how bad it looks, I'm going to keep it because of what it means to me. It's made a journey this far. It's wore out. I'll go through several more. And I'll probably, by the time I pass away from this world, I'll have a stack of Bibles this tall that I've worn through. But they all have special meaning. This Bible right here, this little New Testament, was given to me on my day of ordination as a special gift to me from one of our church members. This Bible right here was a gift to me from one of the members of my former church. The day I left, she presented me with that Bible. I keep it as a keepsake. This is another pink Bible. It ain't mine. It's Leslie's. This was the Bible, the, uh, one of the last Bibles, that, the last Bible she had where it was inscribed, Leslie Graves. Now her Bible that she uses today, she uses all these pretty colors. I think a preacher got to use a black Bible. It says Leslie Kirby. This was the first one she had after we got married. We've got... The Holman Christian Standard Bible that I study from. We've got the Holman Christian Study Bible that I teach Sunday school from. Leslie's got her, uh, her Bible right here that she got when she was in the youth group, held together by duct tape. Y'all got some of these Bibles, don't you? That's held together by duct tape. She got this one when she graduated from high school. Her church presented her that when she graduated from Speak High School in 2007. We know the history of every one of these Bibles that we've got in our possession. I can't read them all at one time. I don't know why I've got so many, but we know where each one came from. And over the years, we're going to multiply, and we're going to get another Bible, and we're going to be given another Bible, and we're going to cherish each one. We'll know the history behind that Bible. But tonight, I want you to take your Bible in your hand if you've got one. And if you don't, you need to see me, and I'll make sure you've got one. But I want you to take that Bible, and I want you to look at it. And do you remember when you bought that Bible? Do you remember when you got that Bible where it came from? Do you know the history of your Bible? You look at it and, and you may remember somebody giving that for a, a birthday or a Christmas gift. Or maybe you just got a hankering for a new Bible and went to Lifeway and got one. Do you know the history behind your Bible? I want you to look tonight at that Bible. And I want you to see the power that's in it. I want you to see the power that's in that Bible. I want you to see the truth that's in that Bible. We talked last Wednesday night, a couple of Wednesday nights ago when I stood before you, Brother Scotty was gone, and we talked about the way the world was getting, how that a Christian needed to make a stand, that how we, we've accepted so many things as Christians, we've let so many things walk past us, and we sat back and thought somebody else was going to take care of it, when all the time Christians should have been making a stand. Folks, I'm going to tell you tonight, and I mentioned it, and like I told you Wednesday night, these are issues that will not go away until they're done. Complete, finished, and done away with. We need to understand something tonight, and I don't want to be political about it. I'm not trying to be. But when we, our leader stands and says that he is in favor of a homosexual lifestyle, it's okay. Folks, I want you to know something. That's no big deal that the president said that. That's just one more person that has okayed it with that lifestyle. But folks, we've got to make a stand. 
It's no other book that I know that you can open to and it call it an abomination unto God. There's no other book that I know that's so truthful that it can cut to the bone when we're wrong. I want you to see the truth in that Bible. I want you to see the hope that's in this Bible. I want you to see the hope that's in this Bible. I think about the April's 27th tornadoes when people began to rummage through their stuff. And I remember Miss Lane, after we was there helping with her, she said that they found a Bible in the middle of all that rubble. And she said it was an inspiration to her and gave her hope. That hope that's in that Bible. I want you to see and, and remember the time that it's been the hope for you. How many times it's led you to joy. How many, how many of you remember your salvation? You remember the day that you were saved? You remember somebody or, or yourself going through the pages of God's Word and reaffirming that truth and how much joy it brought you? You see that joy in that Bible tonight. You see it's comfort in times of hardship. You see it's boldness. It's boldness. You see, that book that you hold in your hand tonight sometimes is a lot bolder than I can be. It's a lot bolder than you can be. You remember I told you a couple of weeks nights ago if you were out here, and I apologize for reiterating and uh, uh, telling it again, but you see, you can argue with me all you want to. You can deny what I say, and you can tell me that I'm wrong, and I'll be okay with that because every once in a while, I'm wrong. But you see, if I'm preaching out of this word, and I'm using it word for word and in context. You can't argue with the Word of God. You can't argue with it. I want you to see that boldness. I want you to see that purity. Psalms 12 and 6 says that the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. It's pure. There's nothing in error about it. It's not blemished. It's not ridiculed. Uh, it is ridiculed. People ridicule it all the time. It's not blemished. It's not been drugged through the mud. It's true. It's pure. We see that the Word of God is sharper than two, any two-edged sword. You see the sharpness of it. How many times have you been convicted by this book? Have you opened it up and you looked at it and you found exactly what was wrong in your life and, and it said it's wrong and you thought, oh, that hurts, that hurts. It cuts you so deep and pierced your heart. It's so sharp. I want you to look at that Bible tonight. Hold it in your hand. Look at that Bible tonight. I want you to see that that Bible right there, that same Bible that you hold in your hand, has divided nations and it's divided kingdoms. Sometimes it's even divided families. This Bible right here is survived the orders of destruction from kings, dictators, and other Mildest leaders. You see, there's dictators that have ordered for this Bible to be taken up and destroyed, yet somehow we still have it today. You see, this same Bible that you hold in your hand, it's, it's, it's endured and survived the, the, the abuse that atheist and liberal-minded folks and the radicals have inflicted on it. It survived it. You see this Bible right here, it's, been tra uh, tra it's traveled into poverty-stricken areas. It's, it's traveled into areas that's been uh, stricken with disease and plagues. It's been there. It's been there. That same Word of God that you hold in your hand, it's been carried through the fires and the trials of life. I think about this little Bible right here. That little New Testament that I had in my hand. That Bible right there was carried by a serviceman. It was carried into battle. Carried into a war zone. This Word of God has been carried through war-torn countries by our servicemen and women. It's been carried by Christians from everywhere from pulpits to the mud pits. Y'all understand that tonight. Do you understand what I'm saying about your Bible that you hold in your hand? It's been there. It's seen it. This Bible has been torn, rolled in, highlighted in, pages crinkled and dog-eared. It's, it's been abused by Christians in a good way, just like mine down there with the, the side coming off of it. It's been soaked by tears. How many of you mamas have sat down with this Bible and distressed over one of your children? 
How many of you folks have sat down over this Bible when you felt the conviction of the Lord dealing with you and you had nothing to do but cry and the tears fell one by one on this Bible? It's been soaked with tears, y'all. I know mine has. And I'll be honest with you. This Bible's been soaked by tears of many, many, many people. You see, this Bible right here has been handed down from generation to generation to generation. It's even ended up in the hands of people who wish to kick it, curse it, mock it, spit on it, tear it, burn it, and destroy it. It's ended up in those hands. Look at your Bible tonight. Hold it in your hand, and I want you to look at something tonight with me. No matter what size, what color, paperback, patent leather, brown, yellow, red, pink of all colors for a Bible. You see, this, this Bible right here, brand new or broken in, is the Word of God. It is the unfallible and errant Word of God. This Bible right here has endured the test of time, and now it's in mine in your hands. We own a copy of it. We have it in our hands. You see, this Bible right here, it's just as firm as a foundation as the day that God inspired the Scripture to go in it. It's a firm foundation for a Christian to stand on. Y'all remember Brother Scott talking about our former director of missions, Brother George Whitten. How that at Choir Fest one year that he said, I don't know about you and me, but I'm going to stand on the Word of God. And, and you know, I ain't going to stand on my Bible because y'all might throw me out over that. But folks, what he meant is a good foundation to build upon. Jesus is the rock. A strong foundation. These words are His words. These are the words of God. They're truthful. They're, they're, sometimes they hurt. I understand that. But they're still truth. And if you build on these words, I sit back in my office while I go with a couple who's fixing to get married. And I said, as long as you keep Jesus Christ and His Word at the center of your marriage, I won't tell you you won't have trouble and heartaches, but you'll have somewhere to go over it. You stand upon the Word of God. Folks, that's what's wrong with us today. Our Christians ain't standing on the Word of God like we ought to. I don't know how many Bibles that I've got down there tonight, but I want you to understand one thing for sure. All these, all those you have in your hand, they are the Gospel. They are the Gospel. Christians need to stand on the Gospel. Yes, we know the history of our Bibles, don't we? We know the history of our Bibles. And I'm giving you a lot of facts tonight and a lot of opinion tonight. But I just want you to understand what you've got in your hand. I want you to understand. I think so many times we take this book for granted. We take it for granted. Just like the lyrics of that song said, we take it for granted that it kept us from sin for many, many years, some of us. But you see, tonight, if you've been a born-again child of God... It keeps you from sin. When you do sin, and we all do sin, it convicts you about it. And it lets you know right from wrong. We know the history of our Bible. Did you know? Y'all, I think sometimes we're some of the most arrogant people. Some of the most selfish, spoiled people that I think I've ever met in my life. I'm not talking about Courtland and Baptist Church. I'm talking about we as Americans. We as free people. You see all the copies of the Bible that we've got in our house. A lot of you have as many copies, if not more. Maybe less, but you've got them in your home, just like what we've got them. Did you know that tonight that this Bible that we hold in our hand tonight is illegal, illegal, punished by, punishable by death, Illegal in 52 countries, 38 restricted nations, and 14 hostile areas. They can't have it. They can't have it. Did you know that almost weekly, a Christian somewhere in this world is being persecuted because they own just a portion of this Bible? Just a portion. Not the whole thing, not even a whole chapter. Just a portion. And they're being persecuted. Yet we have umpteen million copies in our home. I take my 
mother-in-law's Alabama Baptist. I don't get it. I ain't good enough to get the Alabama Baptist. But she does, and she gives it to me. This come out a couple of weeks ago's issue. The headlines read, Islamic governor opens ways to crack down on Christians. Indian pastor, women, and children beaten by Hindu extremists. The statement under that says about 300 extremists led by the village head suddenly surrounded a house shouting anti-Christian slogans, mocked, verbally abused. At least 10 Christians sustained injuries receiving medical treatment. Sources say adding the attack went on for more than six hours. Six hours somebody endured beating and mocking and screaming. Six hours of that. When was the last time you went through six hours of being mocked and beaten and screamed at for just having church? 